Ron Lawson from Dirt Bike Magazine. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to get to ride a Moto Marini Xscape. This is an adventure bike you might or might not have heard of. It's a 650cc parallel twin. Uh, originally the Marini name, an Italian name. This particular bike comes from China right now, but we're looking forward to riding it. Styling distinctly Italian. Up here it's got an adjustable windscreen. The, uh, the motor is made by CF Moto in China. Marini is actually a different company down the street basically from CF Moto. The fork, old Italian name Marzocchi. Tires, Pirelli. This bike has a lot going for it. The one thing you might want to know up front is the price. Suggested retail is $7,999 and right now there's an incentive going on. $1,000 off or a three-piece aluminum luggage set. Either way, it's an amazing deal. We're going to go for a ride in the mountains of the Cleveland National Forest. So you old timers might remember the Moto Marini name. It was a big deal back in the early 70s, mostly in Europe. Didn't have very much of a presence here in the US. Uh, but I remember the 350cc V-twin they had. Pretty exotic motorcycle. I think they also had a 500 V-twin. At any rate, Marini kind of went the way of a lot of companies in that era. Eventually, it was bought by the Castiglione brothers uh, of the Kajiva name. And then it went through a bunch of owners. Now, it's owned by a Chinese company. But it's still Marini. You can draw a, uh, a distinct line of lineage all the way back to the original Motor Marini. The headquarters is in Milan, Italy. Like I said, all the manufacturing in China these days. But gotta say, manufacturing quality is pretty good on this bike. So the motor's good. You know, I gotta say, it's it's not slow by any means. Uh, it's way faster than a KLR650, for example, which uh, I know that's not setting the bar very high, but you gotta remember this bike is almost in the same price range as a KLR. It makes much more power, of course, than any of the Japanese 650cc dual sport bikes. When it comes to comparing it to like the Husky 701 or the, the KTM 690, uh, those bikes are quite a bit stronger. They're basically more sophisticated motors, even if they are singles. As single cylinder bikes, of course, they're much lighter than this. Uh, this is a substantial motorcycle. It's no lightweight. To tell you the truth, it's really comfortable. I'm kind of picking up the pace right now. And nothing scary is happening. Bike handle is perfectly stable. The suspension isn't bad. It's, it's not... Uh, it's not the cushiest ride in the world. I think you're kind of a prisoner to the weight on a lot of bikes like this. Uh, the rear suspension is actually a KYB shock. Uh, it's, it's not especially sophisticated. It does have adjustable rebound damping. The fork, Marzocchi. Now, I'm not sure if Marzocchi's uh, lineage is, is still 100% uh, Italian. I don't know where the factory is, to be honest. I remember they went through some kind of bankruptcy issues a few years back. Uh, but fork is actually a highlight on this bike. You gotta say it's working pretty good. I know it has adjustable rebound, compression, damping, and I think uh, preload as well. I haven't done any of that for right now. Just kind of taking the bike as it comes. We're gonna get into the dirt up here in a little bit. Um, right now, this is kind of a rough pavement road leading up to Maple Springs, which is kind of a dual sport entryway into the Cleveland National Forest in, uh, in Orange County. It starts off on, on pavement that is it's closer to being dirt than pavement, and then, uh, and then turns to dirt up here. Sometimes it's in good shape, sometimes it's not. So the first thing I notice in the dirt here is the, the tires. The tires are exceptional. These are Pirelli Rally Cross tires. Uh, way, way better than typical adventure bike tires come stock. Actually, if when you get into premium level bikes, 
you might come with tires like this. But for the most part, they come with uh, street tires. And, uh, and if you want to go off-road, it's kind of on you to come up with tires uh, of, this, of this level. These are great. And even though this bike is no lightweight, I, I really have no trouble manhandling it on, on this dirt road. I think that uh, Maple Springs is a little bit better shape now than I've, I've uh, seen it in the past. I'm not sure if the, the uh, Forest Service comes up here and actually maintains it. So this is like a lot of adventure territory in that you have smooth dirt punctuated with, uh, with pretty sharp water bars and holes and all kinds of uh, chaos. It comes up on you fast. You don't have it in me to go really fast right now. There's a lot of cars coming down the other way, usually this time of the evening. Uh, I've been on this road quite a few times on mountain bikes. And you kind of gotta, gotta keep a heads up as fast as I want to go, this bike is handling great. The front suspension is uh, a, a little, little better than the rear. It seems like I get kicked every now and then on one of those water bars in a way that I, I don't expect. Well, the power is great. This bike doesn't have any kind of, of uh, traction control, no kind of power band modification. You kind of get into that stuff on the more expensive adventure bikes, not necessarily something at this price level, but it's, it's a 650. It's not like you're going to have that much trouble managing this level of power. It, it's not the same thing when you get on a thousand cc Africa Twin, something like that. Um, and, and even a, uh, a KTM 890, that's a powerful motorcycle. You kind of need traction control. You need something to kind of uh, assist you with managing all that power. This thing is its not slow by any means, but it's not going to get away from me. And uh, it doesn't rev particularly high. You kind of have to short shift it. I think red line's around, around 9,000 RPM. It's kind of an old school power band. Most of the power is down low, and frankly it handles better and works better at low RPM. I don't know if it shows here, but uh, as you get to the higher uh, altitudes here on this particular road, it gets rocky. And this might be a, a, an area where traction control would be of an advantage. But again, I'm not accelerating that hard. It's not like I'm spinning the wheel and nothing's ever getting away from me. This is kind of a sweet bike. When you consider the other bikes in this category, basically you're talking about the big singles, which are quite a bit exp more expensive. That's the KTM and the Husqvarna. Uh, or you're talking about a Suzuki V-Strom 650. V-Strom 650 is kind of an icon in the adventure bike world. One of the things that kind of got it rolling back in the day, it is not a very sophisticated bike by today's standards. It doesn't have any of the, the features that we've that we've now come to expect on adventure bikes. So it really is a lot like the, the Xscape. The price on the Xscape, just uh, more and more amazing. The more I ride it, the more impressed I am with that price point. Basically seven grand and, uh, and, and it's just a, a sweetheart in every way. Now, it does come stock with anti-lock brakes, and you have to disable that every time you start, and it takes quite a few steps to do that. First of all, you, you hit the, the bar, you get into off-road mode. On other bikes, off-road mode means traction control, it means modified power levels. On this bike, all it really does is give you access to disable rear anti-lock brakes. But I've ridden it with uh, the anti-lock brakes activated in the dirt going downhill and it shatters a little bit, kind of like you expect 
you don't ever get scared. You don't ever get that feeling like you're coming to a turn and you're not gonna slow down in time. It's, it's actually not very invasive. I also like the fact that this is a six speed. You can click it up a gear and then another gear and it always seems to pull and in the taller gears everything kind of happens more slowly everything gets more manageable now if i got carried away and started going into these turns a little bit too hot uh, I, i'm not sure that things would go well for me because it's a it's a heavy motorcycle there's no getting away from that and even though the brakes are good uh, when when gravity starts taking a hold of you there's there's not a lot you can do about it good brakes or, or no brakes again the tires really really help in that regard there are a lot of cool features on this bike they'll be kind of fun if i ever get to take it on a long trip i mean for one thing it's got uh, it's got a couple of usb ports you could mount your phone up on the bar and have power for it uh, that windscreen is adjustable up and down the levers are adjustable the controls are excellent i think they must have plans for more electronic features on this bike in the in the future because um, you have quite a few buttons that allow you to scroll through menus and right now most of those menus are empty but we have a feeling that marini is is going to have something else in the near future it'll be worth taking a look at right now i'm I'm pretty pleased. I'm hoping they let me hang on to this bike long enough to really do something cool with it. Uh, for right now, I'm kind of staying close to home. And uh, But down the road, I think this is a bike that you could cross a couple of states with and have a lot of fun. So stay tuned. We might have more on the Marini. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, this is a bike that uh, that's worth taking a second look. Maybe making a few modifications to decking it out with a few more accessories. I'm looking forward to riding it some more. Thanks for watching.